you for everybody who's joined the webinar. My name is Joshua Stenhouse and I'm going to be taking you through this session today on five simple, simple steps to replacing your DR site with Azure. Who am I? I'm the technical evangelist at Zerto. Been with the company since 2012. I was a customer back in 2011. I'm the global lead on the product, large accounts, tech deep dives, demonstrations, webinars like you're going to have today. And I also happen to be a PowerShell addict. If you've seen my blog, virtuallysober.com, you'll see some of the cool scripts that I write on there and share for free. And I've also worked in virtualization in general since about 2008. And just as a quick introduction on the company, if you don't know Zerto, we provide enterprise class virtual replication and DR solutions for both on-premise DR and to the cloud, which is what we're specifically going to talk about in this webinar. And as a brief agenda, first I just want to talk about why should I even be interested in replacing my DR site with Azure? What are the key drivers? What are the key reasons? And, and what should I be considering? And once I've sold you this, which I promise you I will, in fact, it's so easy it sells itself, then you're going to say, OK, well, that's great, but how do I get there? This is all great in principle, but what can I actually do to start using it? Everybody talks about the cloud in so many different ways, but there's a big difference, as everybody knows, between talking about it and actually doing it. And then I'm going to take you through each of the steps of how you can do this today. I'm going to show you using my own home hyperconverge lab of how you can replicate into Azure. So I'm giving you a live demo of each of these steps. And I'm also going to give every single person on this webinar a free giveaway. Everybody wins. It's not a t-shirt, but it's something cooler than that because it's going to help you on your journey to Azure. So we're going to come to that later in the session I'll show you what the giveaway is, and I promise you, if you're looking at Azure, you're not going to want to miss this giveaway. And then we'll close with some next steps and just give you an overview of some additional re resources and learning. Because the one thing I, I want to share with you is that I understand why you joined this webinar. You're here to learn. You're obviously looking at Azure. You want to know how you can use it. So the key thing is I want you to come away with the takeaways of why should I even do this, why it's so compelling for the business and me, how I'm actually going to do it, and then give you the tools to actually go out there and do it. So I promise this is going to be a fantastic use of your time today. So thank you very much for joining. We are recording this. We are going to be sending out the recording and the slides, so don't worry about that. If you have any questions as you go along, throw them in the box, and I will answer them. Any issues with audio, etc., throw them in there, and we'll diagnose and resolve them as we go along. But let's start just by a brief overview. Why should I even be looking at Azure? Well, it's safe to say that IT has evolved because we start with physical servers. You might still have some physical servers. Then there was the big shift to virtualization over the last decade. We see more and more elements of the physical data center moving into the hypervisor with software-defined technologies. Zerto started it, in my opinion, with moving replication into the hypervisor. But now we see storage, popular technologies like vSAN. We see networking moving into the hypervisor, technologies like NSX. And now we start to see a mix of all these different private, hybrid, and public cloud services. It's very rare that any IT department is only doing one of the things that you can see on the screen here. Most of you are doing all of them in different amounts. And you're using them in the right place at the right time, where it makes most sense for your business. And one of the, where the areas that it makes most sense to me is disaster recovery. And if you look at all the different elements that you have to put into managing your own do-it-yourself DR site, it's pretty astounding. And everything from the servers, the storage, the networking, the power, the cooling, the facility, the colo, the building, the racks, the sizing, the admin, the licensing, the performance, the management, the health, I'm running out of breath. It's such a huge amount of work that you have to put in just to have the capacity sat there in a DR site ready to run in the event of a disaster. And for that reason, a lot of customers and environments out there might try and use it on a daily basis for dev tests to just try and get some value back from it. But there's so much work, time, effort, and money that has to go into a permanent sunk capex cost to just make sure you've got that capacity there in the event of a DR scenario to run all of your VMs and your workloads in a different location. It's a huge overhead. And when you look at the change and the revolution that Azure is bringing to the market, and yes, it started with AWS, we all know that. But the key differentiator for me and Microsoft Azure 
is this is the public cloud for vSphere and Windows administrators where anybody can log into a simple web interface, put in the credit card details, maybe use your Microsoft Azure credits that you've got as part of your Microsoft licensing agreement, so it could be even free. And with this simple web interface, completely automated via Power CLI and PowerShell, sorry, if you, if you need it, you have limitless capacity that's on demand, simple, and cost effective, and you're moving from a CapEx to an OpEx model because you're only paying for what you use when you need it. And so the next time your boss comes to you and says, how are we using the cloud? You can say, oh, well, we're using Azure for maybe disaster recovery, removing this huge overhead of having our own DR site, and now we're only paying for what we actually use. You look like a rock star. He or her looks like a rock star. The business is doing more for less and is running in the most cost efficient way and optimizing their IT by using the cloud. And this becomes even more compelling, in, in my opinion, when you start to look at the, the key use case of burst capacity for DR. And when you map this to your existing environment and the virtual machines where everybody's got a huge number of smaller VMs typically, where they might have a couple of CPUs, a few gig of RAM, a few couple hundred IOTs or a few thousand in total. Then you'll have a small to medium tier of VMs, a couple CPUs, a bit more RAM. You might have some larger VMs, eight CPUs, maybe 20 plus gig of RAM. And then every environment has pretty much got some big daddies, the big fat VMs, the most important critical VMs, huge CPU count, huge RAM count. And when you put this in the context of your own on-premise DR, just start at the servers. How many ESXi hosts is it going to take you to have to provision and manage in advance just to run all of your CPUs, your RAM? Just that. And not only buy the servers, install them, and manage them, but then license the hypervisor on top. It's a huge overhead just sat there in case of a disaster. And then you factor in the storage, and then the licensing and the management on top of that. And then the real kicker is every three to five years, you've got to go and refresh the whole lot, again, just for a disaster. And if you look at the whole reason why the public cloud came to fruition in the first place, it was created, created for burst use cases, for the Black Friday, for Christmas, the ability to scale to meet that demand. And DR is this number one use case for bursting, because you go from zero requirements to needing hundreds of CPUs, hundreds of gigabytes of RAM, in a couple of seconds because now you had a disaster and now you need that capacity. And that's why the cloud and Azure is so compelling for me because it's limitless, it's on demand, it's simple, and most of all, it's bloody cost effective. And all of this means to me is I mean that when I show you how you can actually use this and you have an enterprise class solution that allows you to use Azure, I'm pretty confident in saying that 2017 is the beginning of the end of a traditional DR site. I think in five years' time, maybe even sooner, we're going to look back on ourselves today and laugh at the time when we used to do on-premise DR and say, that was crazy. Why did we ever bother? This is so simple. And I'm going to show you in the webinar and the demos that I'm going to go through today. But it's all well and good saying all this. You've got to have some hard numbers. How do you justify this internally? How do you sell it? to the business owners and the decision makers. And here I have an example customer TCL calculation. So this is a Zerto customer who just switched from doing their own DIY site to Microsoft Azure using Zerto. And they had 300 VMs totaling 1,607 CPUs, 4.23 terabytes of RAM, and 149 terabytes of disk. And if you calculate a three-year TCO, you can do this yourself on a piece of scrap paper right now. It doesn't have to be an exact calculation, but I'm sure with these numbers, you can say, well, this is going to be roughly, you know, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars in servers to power all these CPUs and RAM. It's going to be maybe seven, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars in storage because I've got 150 terabytes of production storage. I probably want some nice performance storage in case I have to fail over, I need the performance, I've got to manage it, I've got to support it over a three year period, I've then got to license the hypervisors on top, and I've got to manage it. And this 
is a sample calculation that you can come up with very easily on your own back where you can say, okay, so reasonably for this many VMs, it's going to cost me maybe around 2.3 million over a three-year period to have everything in that DR site ready to go in the event of a disaster. And if you compare that to using Zerto and Microsoft Azure as a DR site, then with the servers, you're actually only paying for what you use and you're not actually paying for any recovery VMs until you click failover, until you actually need them. And the only thing apart from that is some management VMs, which we'll come on to because we're going to go through how you actually implement this in the architecture. But suffice to say, the running cost of the servers, because you're just paying for the VMs as you need them, is extremely low. The storage you're paying per gigabyte per month, you're not paying for this huge array up front, so you're just paying for what you use. Yes, you've got to license Zerto to replicate up into the cloud over the three-year period, but in terms of managing the infrastructure on the back end in, the, in, in Azure, it's gone. There is no cost there. And I'm just plucking this figure out of a reasonable gesticulation that you might have one full-time admin who dedicated all their time to the DR site. You could bring this down. Totally depends on your environment. But I can guarantee you're not going to spend any time on managing infrastructure in Azure. You can't manage a host. You're just selecting the resources you need. And if you compare the total cost together, a very rough calculation, this customer is going to save $1.5 million in the next three years by switching to Azure. Once you have the technology, once you have the ability to consume this, it is a complete financial no-brainer. And this is nearly 70% over three years cost saving. And I'm not even including rack space, power, and cooling. I could add a lot more complexity. I could put in the cost of electricity, put in the cost of floor space. You name it, you can go to town and you can keep adding these out. And all it's going to do is get cheaper, more cost effective, and more of a no-brainer. So take this, do a little math in your own environment, and with the cool giveaway that I'm going to give you later in the webinar, it's going to really help you come to your own calculations of exactly how much it's going to cost you to replicate to Azure. So that's cool, Josh. How do I get there? And what I want to talk about is the different steps involved in getting there. So the first step is how do you prepare your environment to plug it into Azure to start consuming it, the disaster recovery? So the first thing you're going to need is a Zerto Virtual Manager. This is just a .NET installer that you put in a Windows VM that links into your vCenter or System Center. So everything that you want to replicate to Azure to remove the need for a DR site needs to be in a hypervisor, either from VMware or Hyper-V. It doesn't matter which one, it can go across hypervisor because as you know, Azure is definitely not running on VMware vSphere. This is just your management interface. From here, you then deploy the Zerto virtual replication appliances onto each ESXi or Hyper-V host. And these are the data movers. These are what are actually going to replicate all the VM data up into Azure. And it's a scale architecture. They're very small in the footprint. One vCPU, four gig of RAM, 12 gig of disk, a static IP. They have built-in compression of the replication traffic to minimize the usage of the link that you have, that you will have up into Azure. You can throttle that replication traffic if you've got other services on the link. And they have built-in resilience to any one outages. And the two reasons you have them on every host, one is you vMotion the VMs, can carry on the replication into Azure. And two, it scale out. I said it before, I'll say it again. And the key reason is that the same software architecture here can support protecting 15 VMs that can protect 5,000 VMs because you're going to have more hosts, hosts sorry, and then more replication horsepower. And the, each of these appliances is replicating the VM block level changes. So this is near sync replication, constantly tracking and streaming the block level changes with no snapshots, no performance impact, and you're going to have a sub 20 second RPO. Does an initial sync of the data once that's finished, which by the way, there's no performance impact as it does that initial sync. It will go as fast as possible in the background. Very important when you're replicating to the public cloud because it might take a bit longer that you're not impacting the performance as you're doing that. And any VM in your environment, as long as it's Windows 2008 R2 onwards, Red Hat Linux, Ubuntu, CentOS, it's basically whatever VM is supported by Azure, you can replicate, protect, and recover in Azure. There is a current limitation when replicating to Azure of the maximum VM disk size, which is currently one terabyte. 
due to the maximum page disk size in the storage account. This is being lifted later this year, I believe, to potentially around eight terabytes. There is a workaround that I can share with you today, and I'll point you to the correct blog post later on. And another restriction we have is for any VMs that are using UEFI or Gen 2 in a Hyper-V environment, the technology I'm showing you here from Zerto doesn't support these. So if you have UEFI, UEFI VMs, Gen 2 VMs, then I am going to recommend using Azure Site Recovery because that does have the ability to convert them back to Gen 1, which is a requirement on Azure. It's not a requirement of anything to do with Zerto. The next step that you're going to need is to configure some connectivity. You know, how do you connect your on-premise data center into the cloud? And for this replication that I'm going to show you, what is supported is a minimum 5 meg link over a site-to-site -site VPN or express route. What isn't supported is a point-to-site VPN or direct over the web. Might change in the future, but a key reason point-to-site doesn't work is point-to-site is just from one machine into Azure. With this technology, each Zerto replication appliance and the Zerto manager all need to talk to the management VM in Azure. So it's not going to support all of them communicating, which is why you need the site to site. And an alternative is actually a reverse SSL VPN from Azure. And of course, this is more of an alternative for just testing. But the reason I suggest this and I like it is that, okay, it is pretty easy to connect your on-premise network into Azure if you send the information to your network team and they handle it. But as soon as you've got to pass that off, you are making production changes. It can go through change control. It can take quite a while to get through. And yes, if you're implementing this production, are you going to want the correct networking, dedicated connectivity into Azure so you can actually use these VMs when you fail over? Of course you are. But for just testing it, it seems a little bit overkill. So what I actually do in my environment, and I'll show you in the demo when we switch to it, is I'm using Soft Eva. Couldn't recommend it enough. I have a Soft Eva VPN server installed in my lab on a VPN server. I've configured the Azure VPN service. It's free. So it's using dynamic DNS. I don't have to know what IP my environment has ever changed to. I installed a Soft Eva VPN client in my Azure VM. I configure a static IP address and for it to auto-connect. And so over SSL, with no fancy networking requirements, of course, I'm replicating from my home lab, so my router doesn't even support me creating SSL VPNs. I don't need to worry about that because I'm bridging straight over it and I'm going to be replicating over SSL. So again, we'll be sending this out. You can go back and review this, but couldn't recommend that enough because I can tell you from deploying Zerto into Azure, using this alternative method here, I can have replication established within five minutes because I just install the client, connect it in, give it an IP, pair it, and I'm ready to go much, much quicker for a trial than going through sending a network request to your network team or going and buying an express route contract and tying it in. That's what you do when you've decided for just testing it out. For me, this is good enough. So what's step three? How do I actually enable DR to Azure? So in Azure, you're going to go to the Azure Marketplace. You need to search for Zerto Virtual Replication and deploy a Zerto Cloud Appliance. And the reason we're calling it Appliance is actually not because it is a Linux appliance. It's still in running inside a Windows VM and specifically a D3 V2 size VM. It's actually a combination of a ZVM and a VRA. So it's giving you a management interface and it's writing all of the replica data into a storage account. And this ZCA, this is what you connect via the connection you just configured to your on-premise Zerto Virtual Manager. And whichever region you deploy this in is where you can replicate to. The common question I get about this is, what region can I use? Any. If you can deploy the ZCA and configure connectivity from your on-premise ZVM and VRAs into it, then you can replicate to it. And all of the data is just stored in a storage account. We're using page blobs for the virtual machine disks, hence the, the one terabyte limit, albeit with the workaround. And then we're using cheap block blobs for the ability to rewind to previous points in time. And this can be from anything from one hour up to 30 days. And as a typical overhead, we recommend an additional 7%. So if you're protecting 100 terabytes of VM, 
then in Azure you're going to be using 100 terabytes in your storage account plus an extra 7 terabytes for the point in time recovery. And this is a scale out architecture in that we recommend 200 VMs for each ZCA or roughly around 90 megabytes a second of sustained writes. So if you want to protect more than 200 VMs, then deploy more ZCAs. If you want to protect VMs between multiple regions, maybe have them split out by department or team or business unit, deploy more ZCAs. It really is that simple. And the beauty of it is that there are no recovery VMs created until you need them. And when they are created, the locally redundant standard VMs, and you can pre-configure the sizing, which we'll come on to next. So step four is configuring the replication. And in Zerto, we have the concept of a LUN consistency group evolved into what we call a virtual protection group. And what this gives you is the ability to select VMs, put them in protection groups, and then you can protect and recover multi-VM applications consistently from a point in time of just a few seconds in the past directly into Azure. And on each protection group, you're going to specify a priority, so a clause on that replication traffic. You can protect all your apps, and then for tier one, tier two, tier three, you apply a different priority of that traffic. This has the benefit of removing any scheduling complexity because it just self-manages the replication and prioritizes the streams based on the amount of bandwidth that's available. If the bandwidth is there, everything is a sub-20 second RPO. If it becomes constrained, then it will start to let the lower tier slip but maintain the lowest RPO on your highest priority VMs. It's beautifully simple. You're going to define all the SLAs around the protection, so your alerts, your policies, your retention, and you're also going to pre-configure, very importantly, all the settings that you need to bring these VMs online in a working state in Azure. So what VM size do you want to use? What networks do you want to attach the VMs to? What subnet, what network security group, what private IP address do you want to assign? All of this you pre-configure on this when configuring the replication, which I'm going to show you in the demo. And then all of it is handled in the background and automated when you click to fail over, test, and recover. And the last thing I, I want to make very clear is that once you've created this protection group, just because you've now got the VMs replicating into Azure, it doesn't break what you typically do on premise, for example, moving VMs between hosts or even storage vMotions, adding, removing, resizing disks, all of this, Zerto sees the change, carries on replicating it. And if you did a storage vMotion between two different data stores, you will not see any impact to the RPO whatsoever because Zerto is replicating these VMs in the hypervisor, it just doesn't matter. So once you plugged in Zerto and Azure, then you can carry on doing everything that you know and love in a, in a virtual environment. And, one of the key reasons why you implemented it in the first place. The final thing, the final step, once you've got everything protected, is testing it. And not only testing it, but then reporting on it to prove that you can actually recover, because it's one thing testing it, it's another thing having the evidence to then put to the business saying, hey, I tested this, this was the report, this proves that we can recover in Azure in minutes, and it works. So. One thing I'm going to show you in the demo is once you configure the replication is, is how you actually test it. So what I'd like to do now is actually switch across and show you exactly what I've been talking about before we then come on to the free giveaway that I want everyone to walk away with from this event. So let me just switch across to my demo lab that we see here. So here I have a VMware vSphere 6.5 environment. And in this environment, I've got multiple VMs, multiple hosts, and the first thing I've got is a Zerto Virtual Manager. Windows VM with the Zerto Virtual Manager .NET installer installed on there for the management interface. We typically recommend two vCPUs, four gig of RAM, static IP, and it can use a dedicated SQL database, or it can use the built-in completely up to you. Just to show you that interface, if we click on the tab here. So here's the Zerto dashboard. The first thing you're going to want to do here is configure and deploy the Zerto virtual replication appliances that we talked about. So the data movers that are going to allow you to sh shove all this replica traffic up into Azure. Very simple to do that. Here we have a list of all the ESXi hosts. We're just going to click New VRA. It's going to ask which data store, the network to use for the replication traffic, 
the RAM to assign to the appliance and a static IP address. We click install and with no maintenance mode, no downtime, we deploy all the appliances onto the hosts ready to then start replicating the VMs up into Azure. And to do that, we're going to pair our on-premise Zerto manager. So we just click on pair here and we put in the IP address of my Zerto cloud appliance. So just to show you that Zerto cloud appliance, if I come across to my Azure interface here and virtual machines. So in the US West region, I went to the Zerto marketplace, I searched for Zerto virtual replication and I deployed this ZCA. And so you can see that this is the only VM that I have running in Azure. I have no other recovery VMs running until I'm actually going to click the failover, click the test, which is exactly why it's so cost effective because this is giving us our management interface. So here is my management VM running in Azure. So this is the interface for the ZCA. You'll notice it looks exactly the same. That's the whole point, completely agnostic to the underlying hypervisor storage or even cloud. And it's got all of the same buttons. It's got live test failover, it's got move. The most important three things, if you lose access to production, this is what you're going to log into to actually initiate the recovery. The whole point in having a dual redundant management infrastructure with the added benefit because this is also writing all of the replica data into the storage account. This, the connectivity is configured separately, so Zerto has nothing to do with the networking between the sites here. As we mentioned in the presentation, you've got to configure a VPN, an express route, maybe a reverse VPN to enable communication between your on-premise ZVM, the VRAs, and this ZCA here. And when you've done that, that is when you can come back and do this pair. You just put in the IP address, and in my environment here, I've paired it to the local IP of the ZCA once it's VPN onto my network. So this is my little cheat. This is my way of testing it very easily and it doesn't matter if my home IP ever changes because all that ZCA is going to do as soon as the connection dropped is redial, look at the Azure VPN service and connect in and reestablish the replication. Really simple without any network changes whatsoever because it's just taking an IP on my local subnet. So here you can see on this Zerto Manager, I actually have it plugged into multiple different hypervisors and clouds. So from the same Zerto Virtual Manager interface, I can replicate between my own vSphere data centers. I can go from Hyper-V to Hyper-V. I can go cross hypervisor. I can even go from Hyper-V or vSphere into AWS, Azure, or a Zerto powered cloud provider. The choice is completely with you. But when you see the features that we have for replicating to Azure, I'm pretty sure that's going to maybe swing you a certain way, and that's why you're on this webinar. So if we go to the dashboard, let's have an overview of what I'm actually protecting in this environment here. So I've got 50 VMs, around 10 terabytes of data in 20 protection groups with a sub 10 second RPO across the board, and roughly around 80% compression on any change blocks, which I'd expect because, I'll be honest, this environment isn't doing that much. But if we come across to the VPG tab, so the consistency grouping mechanism that allows you to select the VMs and where you replicate them, this is where you see something really cool. Because I have the same groups of VMs simultaneously replicating to multiple target data centers. Look at this file server protection group here. I've got a local copy replicating within my data center so I can restore the VM. I can restore individual files directly to production. I have the same VM simultaneously replicating into Azure. If I lose access to my data center, I can recover it in Azure. The same for my SQL. But even better with the SQL server, I have a local copy, I have an Azure copy, and I have a remote copy in my second VMware data center. It really is that powerful having this one-to-many replication, and all of these are with a sub-20 second recovery point objective. So if we come across to Azure, you can drive a failover or a test process from either of these. If we click on VPGs, here we can see all the VPGs that I have replicating in Azure. And what I want to show you is just how simple it is once you've got this protection set up as to how you drive the test failover. So if I click on the SQL Azure protection group, I'm going to click on test failover in the bottom right hand corner. You can see it's already selected. 
I click Next. And here you can see I can confirm the recovery options. One really cool thing is, as I mentioned, Zerto enables you to have point in time recovery with that additional 7% overhead. And the reason that you do that is look at this granularity that you have on recovery. You have thousands of increments in points in time. And again, this is from one hour up to 30 days. So this isn't just disaster recovery protecting you against a power outage. This is disaster recovery that protects you against a database corruption or even rewinding and recovering from a ransomware infection because you can go to seconds before that logical failure or infection occurred. You don't have to accept the data loss of going to a backup. So let's click the latest point in time for this demo. I'm going to click OK. Next. And then start failover test. And now we have no impact in production, no shutdown of the VM. So it's still servicing users, still doing what it should be doing, and with no break in the replication traffic, this is now going to simulate a recovery of those VMs in Azure. So in the next couple of minutes, I'm going to see them spring up as new VMs in my Azure portal interface, and then I'll be able to assign IPs, log in, and actually test the recovery. So while that's running, one thing that I did skip over just for the sake of time is how you actually create these protection groups in the interface. So while we're waiting for that test to complete, We'll come back to my on-premise VMware Zerto Virtual Manager. We'll click on Actions, and then Create VPG. So when you're creating the protection group first, we give it a name. Then we specify the priority, and this is the built-in clause where you can ensure that you're correctly prioritizing the replication traffic streams sorry, of each application tier. So let's click High, for example. And then we're just presented with a list of all the source VMs on that vCenter. Doesn't matter which host, which cluster, which data store. They could even be VMs that are in existing protection groups replicating elsewhere. And to do that, I just select advanced. And here you can see these are all the VMs that are in existing protection groups and the one-to-many replication. But let's say, for example, I want to protect my CRM application. And this consists of these four virtual machines here. I click to add them in here. And this is now going to recover all of these VMs to the exact same consistent point in time, whether that's on-prem to my secondary data center or to Azure. And selecting Azure, all I do is select where I want to replicate to. And this is a list of all of the paired sites. That's all it is. So I can go to my VMware data center. I can replicate locally. I could go cross hypervisor to Hyper-V. But for this demo, I'm going to go to Azure. And you can see I'm going to US West. So I specify my SLAs around the journal retention, the RPOs alerts. This is not a schedule. It's just an alert and a test reminder. I can then configure some advanced storage settings. So temp data is a really cool feature where it will do an initial replication of, for example, a SQL temp DB so that when you boot the, sin the SQL server in Azure, you're not uh, having to reconfigure SQL just to get the service to start. But the cool thing is that it doesn't waste any bandwidth replicating any subsequent I.O. So it's better than excluding because it gives you the same efficiency on the link, but also lowers your RTO because you don't have to manually fix SQL. But if we get to the real crunch of this process, here are the default recovery settings. This is everything I pre-configure on these VMs to make sure that when they come online in Azure in a failover move or a failover test, I'm connecting them to the correct VM network using the, so here you can see all the VM networks I've already configured in my Azure region, the correct subnet, the correct network security group to enable your remote access, your routing, whatever policies you define, and then the instance family. So you can see we have the drop down of all the different instance families. And you can change the default of these. And then I select, for example, for this protection group, I'm going to use a standard DS4 v2. Now, this is the default for the group. You're probably going to have VMs of different sizes within it. So if we click on Advanced VM Settings, here you can see for each VM, I can change all of these individual settings. So let's click on my database VM, click Edit Selected. And maybe for my database VM, I'm going to use a different network security group a different instance family, different instance size, and here you can also see the uh, private IP address allocation as well. So pretty simple to configure all of these, but one thing you need to be aware of is that 
when you're selecting these sizes, you need to match the number of VM NICs and VDISCs in your source VM to the target. So if, for example, you have a source VM that has 10 disks, and I select to replicate to a standard DS2 V2 VM, this only has four disks. That is going to fail when you click fail over test. You can test it with no impact, but it won't let you recover the VM because you don't have sufficient disks in the DR site. So in that circumstance, we need to make sure we're selecting the VM type with sufficient disks. So here it would be 16 on this list. And the Zerto manager will actually validate for this for you when you click next. So if you do happen to click too low a size, then it is going to throw you out and stop you from creating this protection group. So when I click next, it's going to validate that. Click next, and then done. I don't want to click done because I'll be honest, I don't want to start sending all this data across the wire when I'm talking to you guys on a webinar. That might not be good, and I didn't throttle my Zerto manager. Just out of interest, I'll show you that right now. If you go to site settings, then we can come down to performance and throttling, and you can see bandwidth throttling right now is currently set to unlimited. If I wanted to scale down how much of this link Zerto is going to use to send this data, I can click that here. But I'm not going to do that initial sync. But the one thing I want to show you is if I come back to my Azure Zerto Manager, so I have the sub 20 second RPO of my eight VMs from my environment replicating. And the really cool thing is that these VMs are replicating from my house in Westwood, Massachusetts, all the way to the US West Coast Azure Data Center. Look at that distance. That's just running over my softy for VPN, sub 20 second RPO, and I have coast to coast coverage. How easy is that? This for me is where the revolution begins because when you look at virtualization itself, it started with people tinkering with it, people maybe testing, you know, moving test dev workloads, playing with it at home. And then as it gains the groundswell and it's easy enough to do it there, then you start pushing it up into the infrastructure as you test it out and test it at scale and prove that it's enterprise class and ready. And I'm showing to you here that I've now got a full DR solution from my home lab into Azure that you can then take as a template to test in your own environment and look at removing the need for your own DR site. And if we come back across, we can now see the progress on my failover test. So we can see that's now completed. So we have the ability to stop the test according to this back dashboard here. And if I go to my Azure interface and click refresh, we're now going to see our new VMs. They weren't there before. You saw this. Now I have SQL Server 1 testing recovery, SQL Server 2 testing recovery. So it's only now that I'm paying for the compute of the standard DS3 v2 VMs. The rest of the time, I was just paying for the ZCA and the replica data in the storage account. This is why it's cost effective, because even if these were really big VMs, if I'm just doing a test for two hours, the runtime of one of the biggest VMs that you can select in Azure is only going to be a couple of dollars. It's only expensive if you run it for a month or for a year in comparison to a test. This is why it's a no-brainer. Now, of course, in my environment here, because I've done the reverse VPN, I have no networking from my VM to the RDP console of one of these VMs. So there is a quick workaround. All I'm going to do is go into the NIC settings on the SQL server. And what I'm going to do is I want to assign a public IP address to its NIC so that I can connect from my desktop. Of course, if you're implementing this production, you'd go through your network team, make sure that the routing's in place so you don't have to go and manually assign a public IP. Probably not the best thing on a production SQL database, I can imagine. But for just testing it out, seeing how it works and verifying that you can RDP and connect into this, this for me is a, a pretty easy way to do it. So just wait for this to load. I want to click on IP configurations. Then I click on the NIC here. You can see public IP address is disabled by default with good reason. I click enabled. I click to configure. 
I'm going to create a new one and I'm going to select this to be dynamic. OK. And then save. And this is probably going to take 10, 15 seconds. So just as this is running through, just to answer a quick question here, I understand you guys have been throwing questions. I'll be honest, I've been talking so much because we've got so much to cover. Haven't answered any of them yet, but I will come to them at the end. But a very quick question we have here is, can the startup order be defined in the VPG? So on the VPG, you can define the boot ordering. I'll, I'll be honest with you, in the product today, replicating to Azure, it doesn't apply that boot ordering. It will be coming in a future update. So from my perspective, configure it now, and it will be working in the next couple of months in a subsequent update in the Certo Virtual Manager software, which you can do in place. So if we close this down, and we go back to the overview, if we've successfully configured this networking, what we're going to see is the ability to connect in. So it's only giving me the delete option. Let me just close that down and come back. And that was just because I was in the list of NICs. So here we go. So you can see it started. And there we go. We've got the connect button. So I click connect. It's going to download the RDP file, which I then load. Yes, I do want to connect. And now here's a good test. Can I remember my administrator account that I specified on my dummy VM? Well, not that dumb. And the answer is yes, I can, which is good. So here you can see this is now my SQL Server VM running in Azure. I can see all of the disks that have successfully come across, uh, all my database, log files, tempdb disk is there. I've got my new temporary storage disk from Azure so that it, I can leverage that and lo leverage the local fast SSD. And if I click on the Start menu, I can load my SQL Server Management Studio. And then we can log in and check that the database service is started. So my management studio started. And the important thing I want to stress here, I'm doing a full DR test. I'm seeing how this VM now performs in Azure. And I'm doing this in working hours and minutes. Everybody could be still working, hammering away at the SQL database in production. It's still there. It's still replicating. I still have my sub-20 second RPO. And so this is a no-brainer for me because now I don't have to come over a weekend to do my DR testing. I don't have to be unsure whether I can recover or not because I can do this in the middle of the day and find out, hey, is this even going to work? Maybe it does. Maybe it doesn't. But the important thing is Zerto is giving me the ability to test that and find out beforehand so I can make the changes, maybe add in a different VM to the protection group if that's missing, whatever, I can do it and fix it proactively, not reactively when it's too late. So I'm going to connect to the local SQL Server service, and if this is successful, we'll now see my little AdventureWorks database, which we can see is there. We could build out all the tables if we wanted, and this for me is a successful DR test. Yes, it was simple, but I'm showing you how easy and simple this is. So let's close down the console. I'm going to come back to the Zerto Virtual Manager interface, and I'm going to click Stop. And Zerto is going to ask for the result. Because yes, Zerto brought on the VM. We know that we did. Otherwise, it wouldn't have got to the stage that we had there. But maybe the application or the database didn't work. So you can specify the user acceptance, add in your own notes, and click Stop, which is also then going to allow us to build that testing recovery report to prove it just did what I said it did, so that you can meet your compliance objectives, prove out to your management why you need this solution and why it's a complete no-brainer, because you can drive the report. So if we just go to the Reports tab, and then we click on the drop-down as soon as it loads. 
you can actually drive this report from either side as well. So just because I initiated the test in my DR site doesn't mean that I can't come to my production vSphere and Zerto Virtual Manager, go to recovery reports. And here you can see every single failover test, whether it passed, failed. So here you can see, for example, my Azure file server. I click export, PDF. It's downloaded the PDF, and here you go. Here's my recovery report detailing when the test was run, who did it, what the outcome was. It really is that easy. Now that's just DR. What about restoring files? I haven't shown you that yet. It's just as cool. So let's go back to my on-premise Zerto manager. Let's click on actions and then restore file. And here we're going to have a list of every single protected VM. And at this point, I could restore a file and just the files that I need from Azure. I don't have to pull the whole VM. I don't have to restore the whole VM. I could just select the file that I need. But you know what? I don't want to pull it from Azure. I want to pull it from my local replica of my file server. Why would I pull it out of the cloud when I've got a local replica and one too many replication? All I do is click on my file server. I click Next. I select the point in time that I want to recover the file from. So if it was deleted today at 11.35 a.m., I could go to 11.34. Here we go. So just a few seconds before, I click Next. I select the data disk that I want to mount, and this is mounted on the Zerto Virtual Manager. And then I click Start Mount. And this is essentially running the same process as a test. So the VM's still protected. There's no impact to the running VM. There's no impact to the existing data at this point. All it's going to do is mount the disk. And in the Zerto Virtual Manager, I can just pull out the files that I need, download them, and restore them to wherever I want. It really is that simple. It's that flexible. So any second now, here you go. You can see the mount is completed. I click Browse. I can see all the files and folders on the disks that I selected. So here I have my user files. I'll expand this out. I can select the whole folder. Maybe it's my individual home folder or maybe just one PDF. So here I've got a PDF that I created on automating Zerto with PowerShell. I could restore them all as a compressed zip file to reduce the restore time. And again, I just click download. Look what I just got there. I got the file. How quick was that? From any point in time in that journey. There is no quicker solution than for restoring a file. <clears throat> and there's no solution that's going to re reduce the data loss to just seconds like that as well. So it's not just DR what I'm showing you here. It is also the ability to recover these files. So that's enough of the demo. And the reason it's enough, because I want to get to the free giveaway that I promised everyone on this session. And so the free giveaway is pretty cool, because a lot of questions you might have right now are, OK, this is great, but how much storage account data would I actually use based on my environment? What are the VM sizes that I should be selecting for all the VMs in my environment? Because I've got you know, maybe 200 VMs, and they're all pretty much a different size depending on the app and the use case. How do I select the correct size, given that some of the VMs have 20 disks, some have four, some have two NICs, some have one? And what is the runtime of all these VMs if I click failover test? I don't want to do this and all of a sudden get a shock bill for a few thousand dollars in Azure when I was expecting it to be $10. I need to know how much is this, this is going to cost for me to test it and for also when I want to calculate the cost saving of using this as a DR site. And what's the cost of this ZCA, this management server? How many do I need? And when I put all of this together, what is the total cost of my DR solution to Azure? So rather than you having to do this manually, the cool thing is that if you go to my blog, virtuallysober.com, we have, an, I have a new post on there which actually takes you through all of this using a simple PowerShell script. And all the PowerShell script does is you put in your IP address of your vCenter, your username and password. It uses a CSV to select the correct instance size and calculate the cost. And it outputs all of that data. So it gives you two CSVs, one that gives you a list of every single VM, the correct size to use in Azure, given all of the sizing constraints. And then it also gives you a summary of the number of ZCAs, the total cost, 
and everything that you need to fully vet out exactly what you need to configure and how much it's going to cost. So you don't have to go and do this manually. You can just go to the blog, which we'll do now, and I just clicked publish on it this second. I'll, I'll be honest. I was working furiously overnight and up until about two minutes before the webinar just to actually finish writing the blog post because I'd finished the script and then I thought, oh my god, I, I haven't even written the blog post to announce the script. So I just clicked publish now and I can show you this if I drag it across. So if you go to virtuallysober.com, the first post that you'll see there this second is this automated vSphere VM sizing and cost calculator that takes you through exactly what it does, why you need to run it, and the different inputs, outputs, and just to show you here, so and it will also show you the two CSVs that it's going to give you. A list of all your VMs that it pulled from the vCenter, what size you're going to use, why you should use that, because it tells you the source VM NIC count, the source VM uh, discount, its vCPUs, its RAM, what it's picked in Azure is the closest matching minimum size and why, and then summarizes all of that in the total VMs, the total data. You can exclude VMs, so maybe you obviously don't want to include your vCenter. It doesn't include the Zertel components because you're not going to be failing them over. You could maybe exclude AD if you already have that there. All of that manual process that you'd have to do to consider this, I've taken it away. I've written in a script. I've done the hard work so you don't have to. So please go and download it. Give it a run. Any feedback, let me know. I'm always welcoming feedback. I want to make it better. I want to make it more useful. And if this is going to save you a lot of time, please share it on your networks. Share it to all your colleagues because the, at the end of the day, I just want people to use it and benefit from it. And that's why I wrote it. So that's my free giveaway. It is for you guys. Of course, this is open now to the world. But you're the first to know, the first I've told about it. And I just click publish as I drag the screen over here. So what are the next steps? I've given you the blog post on how to actually calculate the sizes and the cost, but I also have a blog post on the same website of how you protect multi-terabyte VMs. I mentioned the one terabyte disk limit. You can actually configure multiple 990 gig disks, and then you can use Windows storage spaces and span a volume across all of them, so you can recover a 10 ter terabyte VM into Azure. It is possible, and this blog post here will talk you through how to do that. Or you can wait, and later in the year, as Microsoft increased that maximum page disk size, you can use that as well. You can go and start a trial. Go to the Azure Marketplace. Search for Zerto Virtual Replication. You can go and do this right now. Don't have to wait for anybody. Search for the trial. Get up and running. And if you go to the Zerto YouTube channel, you can watch the videos end-to-end -to, -end to take you through this again, take you through each step. How do I install this on-premise? What are the exact requirements? There are five-step videos, so it's 25 minutes in total, broken up into different chunks to take you through this process. Very simple, very easy to try. Now, one thing I, I want to cover that I haven't mentioned yet is failback. It's the one question everybody asks, and I'm sure you've been screaming at your monitor all the way through. He's not talking about failback. He's just showing replication to it. He's not showing anything about failback. And today, Zerto doesn't support failback to Azure. But we have dedicated resource from Microsoft developers working with our teams in Israel that are building it right now. And it is coming in the next product update, which is currently scheduled for bang on middle of the year. And what I can tell you is for every single customer in support and maintenance, you will be able to do an in-place upgrade. And you will have a single checkbox that reverses the replication back on premise. And this is an important point for me because everybody asks for failback. And it's a valid question. In order for you to implement a solution in enterprise, it's typically in the top four things on your checklist to consider a solution. So you can check that for Zerto today, I promise, because it is coming. I've seen it with my own eyes, and you'll be able to do a simple in-place upgrade and get it. And in the meantime, there's just a manual process, but we're going to automate that for you. But the one thing I want to be clear on is that once you look into what that checkbox actually means, the next question you're going to ask is, OK, I need failback, but I need efficient failback. I can't use a solution that sends the whole data set back because, as you know, it's free for sending data into the cloud. The real cost comes when you start sending data back out. And when Zerto does fail back from the cloud, we're going to do it the right way. And the right way is we're only going to send just the change blocks from when you booted in the DR site back on premise. So not only is it going to be the fastest 
replication solution to Azure, the fastest recovery solution, it's also going to be the most efficient on failback by only sending those change blocks, not the whole data set. So hopefully you found this really useful. I did actually want to finish sooner than this, but turns out I had a lot more to talk about than I thought. So I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can right now. I will overrun because I know there's a lot of you and a lot of questions. So if you want to hang around, I'm going to go through these questions one by one now. And thank you, everyone, for taking this time. I hope you found it useful. So we have a couple of questions around the recording, the slides. Yes, we're going to get all of that to you. Next one I have around is networking. And can I configure this per NIC? Yes, you can configure exactly which NIC maps to which network security group and which VM network. Next question I have is what happens if you have too many disks then uh, on a protected VM? So actually when you try and protect that VM, if it has more disks than the VM size you selected, the VPG wizard will stop you. It won't let you create the protection group. Next question we have is, is there a limit on the disk size if I span multiple disks, for example, using the workflow in the blog post that I suggested? The, there isn't. It's just a limit on the number of disks that you can attach to the VM based on size. And another important point, if you were, want to use multiple 990 gig disks, is you can also use this not only to overcome the disk size limitation, you can use it to increase the performance because they are standard disks. So if you map multiple disks together, so multiple, each disk is 500 IOPS and around 60 megabytes a second of throughput. If you have six together and you have your volume spanned across all six, then you're going to get six times 500 IOPS, six times 60 megabyte of throughput in theory. But in practice, it might be a bit less, but it's going to be a hell of a lot more performance. Next question we have. Is there no concern about mounting the disks to the ZVM that were encrypted with CryptoLocker, for example? That's a really good question. I totally agree with you. So if you wanted to circumnavigate that, then I'd recommend using a failover test first to an isolated VLAN, verify that there's no infection. And when you're happy, you can then just maybe pull the files from the failover test VM, or you can stop the test and use the same checkpoint and do a file level restore. Next question I have is, does Zerto support vSphere 6.5 and vSAN 6.5? Yes, it does, and that's exactly what I'm replicating from in my environment, and I just demonstrated it. Next comment I have is, I love Zerto. It is awesome. I agree. I love it too. And when you see the demo like you just saw, you don't really need to say that much more. Uh, someone asked for a clarification on what I just said on failback. So I said there is no failback in the product today from Zerto. It is coming in the next update, which is literally going to be in the next four months. So in four months' time, when it's released, you'll upgrade in place, and you'll have a single checkbox to reverse the replication. So you can literally go and test this now, buy it in a couple of weeks, and when you've deployed it to production, before you know it, a couple of months have passed, and then you've got failback. What happens if a disk is added on the source side after a VPG creation? What happens is that Zerto just replicates that new disk. So all the existing data is still replicating, and it's replicating the new disk in the background, and you see that in the interface. So it's completely seamless, you'll, and you'll have protection throughout. And as soon as it's finished, then you can recover the VM and all of its disks. The next question I have from the same person as a continuation is, what happens if a new disk is added that takes it over the number of disks allowed for that VM? So what will happen then is next time you do a failover test, it will break the recovery. So a very important thing, you can schedule, you can automate these failover tests. You saw how easy it is to do. Make sure you're doing them to ensure that these VMs recover in Azure because you can do it. It's going to cost a couple of dollars to run it for an hour to find out and verify that everything's working and still running. The question I have here is, what is the name of the article that helps me calculate the cost and VM equivalents in, in Azure? So I'll just get that back on screen for you now. One second. 
if you go to virtuallysober.com, just loading it on the screen here. And either my bandwidth is slow or WordPress is slow. And here it's, it's automated vSphere VM sizing and cost calculator for DR to Microsoft Azure. Bit of a mouthful, but it does a lot. Next question I've got here is, does my cost calculator work with Hyper-V? It doesn't. It is using Power CLI to query the vCenter. It is something that I could create a version for for Hyper-V, so I'll put that on the list, and I promise I'll get around to it. Next question I've got is, the Zerto Virtual Manager is uh, on Windows. How do we handle Windows updates? So the answer there is, handle it exactly the same as you do everything else in your environment with Windows updates maybe a little bit more uh, careful on it just to make sure because it's a critical part of your infrastructure. Yes, it is uh, available in the fact you should put it in a VM protected by HA and apply your Windows updates, test them, and make sure they're working before you apply them to the Zerto Manager. Uh, another quick question we have on failback, very common topic, is when, that's, when are we going to enable replication from Azure? That is coming in the next version of Zerto, which is currently planned for around four months' time. Next question I've got is around best practices of DNS changes to clients. And um, this is a good question in that, yes, if you re-IP a VM, it's got a DNS server, it's going to automatically update that record. But if you've got multiple DNS servers spread across multiple sites, sometimes that can take quite a while to pr propagate. And just because you brought the VM online in two minutes, if DNS takes an hour to propagate, then your RTO is actually an hour. So one thing you can do is a post failover script. It runs on the target Zerto Virtual Manager or Cloud Appliance. And if you wanted to, you could script all the DNS changes to propagate that out much quicker rather than waiting for the DNS propagation. Next question we got is, what is the timeline for support on Gen 2 VMs? So right now we're working with Microsoft on how we can leverage the, the same APIs that Azure Site Recovery does to do a convert. The conversion process does significantly increase the recovery time objective, which you would need to be aware of even if we did support it. But the real reason that Gen 2 VMs aren't supported is actually because of the back-end hypervisor version. In that Azure, for the most part, is not running on 2012 R2 and therefore doesn't support Gen 2. So it's going to be a combination of either of getting access to the API or all of Azure being able to support Gen 2 and UEFI VMs. Next question we've got is, is replication to Azure a new separate Zerto license or do we upgrade our existing? So if you want the ability to replicate to Azure and between your own data, your own data centers simultaneously, as part of 5.0, we did introduce a new enterprise cloud or license, which you can upgrade your VMs to, to enable replication simultaneously to all those different targets. Next question we got, is there a comparison table or something between Azure Site Recovery and Zerto? Yes, there is. It should be available on the website, or you can email me at joshua at zerto.com. That's joshua at zerto.com, and I'll send you a copy of that. Next question is, uh, the VRA installation is per host, correct? Yes, it's one per host, one vCPU, four gig of RAM, 12 gig of disk, and a static IP address. And sorry for overrunning everyone, this is what happens when you have hundreds of people on a webinar. Everyone's got questions, they're all good questions, and I want to make sure I answer as many as I can. So I think that's it. If anybody thinks of a question, feel free to tweet me, send me an email, whatever you want to do. Uh, thank you very much for your time today. We will be sending out the recording and the slides. Hopefully you found the content useful, the demo really cool, and you can go and grab the, the script from the blog and help you start sizing out your environment. A very quick last question, uh, is Zerto Powered Clouds available in, in Canada? Yes, we have them all over the world, and yes, you can use Zerto to replicate into the, the Canadian Azure data centers. Thank you very much. I'll leave you to it. Enjoy the rest of your day, and...
Have fun.